So up till now we have done the problem in which the, the shaft are in series. First time we will discuss here the shaft are parallel. When the shaft are parallel here, one will be the solid shaft and the outer casing will be the hollow shaft and they are made up of different material. So if you apply any external torque here, then how the torque is distributed between T1 that is the inside shaft and the outside shaft that is the objective. So whatever the torque T is distributed in T1 and T2. Naturally here the sum of T1 plus T2 is same value. Now this type of problem already are similar problem that we have done in the case of axial loading. So in the case of axial loading already we have done the problem when we have two bar, bar 1 and bar 2 are in parallel. And on the rigid plate here we have external force applied is equal to F one end is fixed. So in this case we have to show the two reaction at this point. So this bar may be subjected to the force equal to F1 and the second bar will be subjected to force equal to F2. But since here both the bars are parallel here so we have condition that is a complete equation will be equal to DL1 is equal to same as DL2. That is we have F1 L1 by A1 E1 equal to F2 L2 by A2 E2 and this one is one equation where we can develop the relation between F1 F2 and the second relation is that we have summation of Fx is 0 in that case we have F is equal to F1 plus F2. So these are the two equations here and we have two unknowns in this case one is F1 and F2 and we are comfortable to solve this type of problem. Almost same analogy will be used in the solving the problem of composite analysis. Here we have the linear deformation and in the case of composite shaft we have angular twist. So angular twist for inner shaft that is the solid shaft will be same as for the outer hollow shaft. So strategy is almost same strategy that we have done in the case of axial loading. In this case we assume here the inside core of diameter D1 is a steel core which one is a solid shaft and outside is an aluminium jacket which one is a hollow shaft we labeled it as 1 and 2 and this arrangement is fixed at one end and at other free end we apply the total torque equal to T. So similar to the actual loading we will say here T1 is a torque carried by the steel core and T2 is a torque carried by aluminium jacket. In that case we can develop the equation that total torque T is distributed between the steel core and the aluminium jacket that is we have T1 plus T2. So this is equation number 1 we obtain using summation of torque equal to 0. The second equation is a comparative equation since we have a parallel shaft here for composite shaft that is a for parallel shaft the twist is same. So we have to take the value of theta equal to T1 L1 by J1 G1 that is for steel core and for theta for the aluminium jacket is T2 L2 by J2 G2. So in this fashion we can obtain here two equation we can substitute here for T1. So in this case we have T1 equal to theta multiplied by J1 multiplied by G1 divided by L1 and T2 will be equal to theta multiplied by J2 multiplied by G2 divided by L2 and this substitution we can do in the above equation and we can solve for theta by L and therefore we can find out here twist. Once we know the twist then we can find out the value of T1 and the value of T2. So if we do this substitution for T1 T2 in the equation 1 so we have total torque equal to J1 G1 theta by L1. Now this time we have length is same so it is better to write L for both. L1 is same as L2 plus we have J2 G2 multiplied by theta divided by L. Theta value is common here so we can calculate here deformation per unit length will be equal to torque T and whole thing is divided by J1 G1 plus J2 J2. So this is a strategy in solving the problem of composite. One equation is T1 plus T2 for composite shaft that is for parallel shaft theta is same. So we can equate theta and we can solve in terms of theta by L.
So we'll take a numerical here on the parallel shaft. And B is fixed to the wall. At end A, we are applying a torque equal to T. We have steel core, which one is a solid shaft, we labeled as 1. We have aluminum jacket, which one is a hollow shaft, which one is labeled as 2. We have diameter D1 equal to 54, diameter D2 is equal to 72, and length equal to 2.5 meter. So a 4 kilonewton meter torque T is applied to the end A for the for the composite shaft as shown. Knowing that the model of it is 77 gigapascal for steel and 27 gigapascal for the aluminium, determine the maximum shearing stress in the steel core, maximum shearing stress in the aluminium jacket and the angle of twist at A. Angle of twist we can find out either by steel core or by aluminium jacket. So inside we'll ripple as a shaft 1 and for shaft 1, we have material is steel and for steel, we have G value is 77 gigapascal and the torque applied is 4 kN meter. Outside, we have aluminum jacket. For aluminum, we have value of G is given as 27 gigapascal, D1, D2, L already known. Let T1 is a torque carried by the steel core and T2 is a torque carried by aluminum. In this case, the total torque T will be equal to T1 plus T2. Let Label this equation 1 and here we have the value of T is equal to 4 kN meter. So this one is equation number 1. We have to calculate here the shear stress in the steel cores, the shear stress in the aluminium jacket and the angle of twist at A. Now since we have a parallel shaft that is a composite shaft, so in this case the value of theta A is remain same for both. So we have theta A we can calculate either by using the torque carried by the steel core which one is T1 multiplied by L divided by J into G. So we'll call it as T1 J1 G1. Length is same is equal to T2 multiplied by L divided by J2 multiplied by G2. So instead of theta A I will use only theta because that will be same value. So in this case we have T1 will be equal to J1 multiplied by G1 multiplied by theta divided by L and T2 is equal to J2 multiplied by G2 multiplied by theta divided by L. Let's say this one is equation 2. We'll put 2 back into 1. In that case we'll get T equal to j1 g1 theta by l is common to both plus we have j2 into g2 multiplied by theta divided by l so directly we can calculate here theta by l so we have theta divided by l is equal to torque t divided by j1 into g1 plus j2 into G2. So we have torque is given as 4 kN meter. So it is 4 into 10 to the power 6. Both J1 and J2 will be pi by 32. So we will shift the 32 in the numerator divided by pi. D1 will be equal to this one is a solid shaft. So polar moment of inertia is pi by 32. D to the power 4 is 54 to the power 4 into G1, G1 is 77 gigapascal, is 77 into 10 to the power 3 plus pi by 32, so 32 already adjusted. The aluminium is a hollow, is D2 to the power 4 minus D1 to the power 4. Out of that, we have D2 equal to 72, 72 to the power 4 minus 54 to the power 4 and further divided by the value of G2 which one is 27. So 27 gigapascal is 27 into 10 to the power 3 that will be megapascal. Now you have to solve this equation and you will get this value close to 35.406 into 10 to the power minus 3. This answer is basically given as radian per unit length that will be per meter. Now we have torsion formula is T by J equal to tau that will be maximum value 
डिवाइडेड बाय आउटर रेडियस इज इक्वल टू जी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय एल सो दिस टू टर्म आई विल यूज हियर बिकॉज आई नो द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा बाय एल आई नो द वैल्यू ऑफ जी फॉर द स्टील कवर एज वेल एज एल्यूमिनियम सो वी कैन कैलकुलेट हियर द मैक्सिमम शेयर स्ट्रेस इन द स्टील एज वेल एज एल्यूमिनियम सो लेट कैलकुलेट हियर वैल्यू ऑफ शेयर स्ट्रेस इन द स्टील सो शेयर स्ट्रेस इन द स्टील दैट इज सफिक्स वन यू टू यूज which one is g1 multiplied by r outer for inner shaft we have radius is d1 by 2 multiplied by theta divided by l so we have value of g1 for steel you have to use suffix 1 g1 is 77 so we have 77 into 10 to the power 3 that will be mega d1 by 2 d1 is 54 so we have 54 divided by 2 into 35.406 into 10 to the power minus 3 so this one is per meter so i will divide further here by 10 to the power 3 so that it will become radian per mm now you can solve this value you will get the value of the stress that is the shear stress in the steel is close to 73.6 mega pascal again we repeat this for aluminium so we have shear stress in the aluminium will be equal to g2 now aluminium is a hollow shaft for which outer diameter is d2 so this time you have to use d2 divided by 2 multiplied by theta divided by l so we have g2 value for aluminium is 27 giga pascal so we have 27 into 10 to the power 3 d2 is equal to 72 so we have 72 divided by 2 into theta by l again you have to take this value as radian per mm so we have 35.406 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is meter so you have to divide it by 10 to the power 3 that will be mm now solve this and you will get the shear stress in the aluminum is close to 34.4 mega pascal and finally we have to calculate what is the value of twist at free end so we have theta equal to that is theta a equal to theta by l multiplied by l now here is meter so you have to take this is meter theta by l is 35.406 is 10 to the power minus 3 is radian per meter so length this time we'll take in meter that is 2.5 meter so that meter and meter will cancel out and we can find the value of twist in radian is 0.0881 that will be radian to convert into degree we'll multiply by 180 divided by pi so we have 0.0881 multiplied by 180 divided by pi this answer is 5.07 degree the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here